Hi guys, welcome to 16-Bit Bench, Matt here. Um, today we're going to start winding what is probably going to be a series of videos on how to build a Raspberry Pi handheld into a game case. Um, if you've seen my video about recapping a Game Gear, I mentioned that I have a lot of Game Gears on the shelf. Some of them are not uh, repairable. This is one of them. This was something I got in a job lot. It's just an empty shell. And uh, it's in reasonably good condition, apart from it has a, has a chunk out of it down here. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this shell as the basis for a Raspberry Pi handheld. So in order to, to make one of these things, you're going to need a shell. So you know, we, we've got Game Gear, but um, you could also have a Game Boy or you can make a custom shell. You could 3D print a shell. There's lots of people out there doing this sort of thing. There's lots of options. Uh, one of the popular ones is turning broken handhelds into, into um, Raspberry Pi handhelds. So you know you, you can find a lot of information about that. So we've got our shell. The next thing we need is the Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi uh, B, not the B plus. That um, that's the latest version, but the revision just before that. Um, this is a powerful single board computer that's capable of emulating everything pretty much up to the PlayStation, and maybe a little bit beyond. Um, so this will do a lot of uh, MAME arcade emulation, all of your 16-bit, all of your 8-bit, all of your handhelds uh, can be done on this one board. So the idea being we put this board in this case and you have a portable handheld that can, mo can emulate multiple, multiple platforms and a really fun thing to carry around with you. So the next thing we need is a, is a screen uh, and this is a 3.5 inch uh, what was a touch screen um, it's pretty hard to get one that isn't a touch screen these days uh, and that comes with a driver board here which i've i've disconnected um, and the idea being that the um the driver board would have the screen connected to it and would sit on top of the raspberry pi and the whole thing would kind of sit like this and then you have an hdmi jumper that plugs between the two boards but for um space saving sake we we could you could fit that in here that would fit inside the case, but then you'd have to cut away uh, the um, cartridge slot. You'd have to remove all of that sort of stuff, and I don't really want to do that. I want to uh, I want to streamline it and make it as streamlined as possible. With that in mind, what we'll probably be removing a lot of components from the Raspberry Pi. So you know the bulky Ethernet and USB ports, uh, the pin header. I'm thinking of removing the HDMI and replacing it with a cable which would be quite hard because it's a very small pitch connector. Um, yeah, and just slim this board right down so these two boards uh, then won't need to be on top of each other in the case and I'll be able to have them a little bit offset from each other. Which means you could kind of fit, fit it in sort of like this rather than like that. You see what I mean? So those are the two main components. You also uh, need, uh, obviously, um, a... Uh, uh, SD card. Uh, these usually come with with the Raspberry Pi if you buy it in a in a bulk. But you know a 32 gig one now is is not very much money at all. Um, we are going to be retaining the power and sound boards from the original Game Gear, so these will be uh, recapped and cleaned up. Um, and then we'll use the uh, power board. It can take nine volts in as well as the batteries. So we're going to retain the six AA batteries. That can be used in here obviously they're going to last a way longer with the raspberry pi than they would have um, with the uh with the original game gear internals especially when we don't have that big fluorescent tube so yeah we're going to retain the power board we're going to use that that takes nine volts in gives five volts out which is perfect for our needs we're going to retain the soundboard so that um that takes in line level audio and then amplifies it with this uh potentiometer on the side here and that will drive the internal speaker we'll retain the internal speaker from the original game gear and that will also drive the headphone socket and the bonus of all that being that we don't need to cut any new holes or anything uh, all the all the holes uh, will work with the with the boards that we have if you didn't have the original game gear soundboard or you didn't want to use the soundboard it's also possible to buy one of these small amplifiers and this amplifier works by um, taking line level audio and then you attach you can attach a potentiometer to it to uh, act to the volume but um, this does pretty much exactly the same function as this the only problem being that it wouldn't also drive 
the headphones so we'd have to have a circuit with the headphone socket and then the switch between the headphones and the inter internal speaker and all that stuff so it's, it's much preferable to retain the soundboard than to use this board uh, let's see what else we've got um, we've got a push button uh, power switch so this will take the power in from the power board when it's turned on bump and uh, this will sense that power being turned on and will then boot up the Pi. What it will also do is when the power is turned off, it won't immediately disconnect. Oh, I'm going to come up with a circuit so it doesn't immediately disconnect the power from the Pi. What it does is it sends a pulse over one of the pins to the Pi, tell the Pi it's time to shut down. Do we then wait an amount of time? Once the Pi reports it's shut down, which it comes out on another pin, the power, this thing will turn all the power off to the board. So the reason we're going to use this and not just directly connect the power board is that um, you can corrupt your you can corrupt your Pi if you just power it off. So if you just have a power switch that's wired directly to it and you just turn the power off, uh, Pi isn't shutting down properly. It still write, might be writing files to the SD card at that time, uh, and you could corrupt it. So that's why I'm, I'm going to be using this uh, soft power switch in order to to drive that, and that's going to be quite interesting to get that to work. Uh, here's a Game Gear cartridge that I've printed up with a custom Sega label and the idea being that this will just sit in there and just fill up that hole and I think that looks pretty cool. I might just glue that in. Um, I did think about kind of cutting, like just using the front of the Game Gear, ca Game, Gear game and sort of cutting away all of this and having this space. But you know what? I want to try and keep that. I want to try and keep that as it is. Oh uh, yeah, so that's how how it will look. Hopefully, on the back when it's finished, you'll just have the Sega thing there. Uh, last but not least is a uh, is a Teensy USB driver board, and what we're going to be doing with this is taking all the GPIO pins, all the all the switches, and we're going to be um, converting it into a USB device. So. What you can do is you can directly wire your buttons to the GPIO uh, pin header for the Raspberry Pi and you can configure that. Okay, and that's a completely valid way of doing it. What I wanted to do was I wanted to create a shell that's independent of the Raspberry Pi. So with the with the Teensy, that means that all the buttons in the Pi are now a USB device and that can be, um, you, we can swap out we can build a platform in which we don't need a Raspberry Pi in it. We can swap this out for something else. We could use a Pi Zero. We could use an uh, Orange Pi. We could use a different board entirely. And if something more powerful comes out, I've you know, already pre-designed my buttons to be a USB device, and that makes the whole thing a little bit more flexible, and I kind of like the idea of doing it that way. The other bonus is if the, uh, if the SD card gets corrupted and you lose your uh, Raspberry Pi, you've not lost your button configuration because that is held uh, in the firmware of the Teensy. So yeah, this is just a whole host of GPIO around the edge here, which will wire up to, to different buttons, and then we'll configure it as, a, as probably a joystick device in the, um, in the USB controller. And then when it's plugged in to the Raspberry Pi or for Windows PC or anything, it would detect it as a joystick device and we could um, we could drive it that way, so that's the way we're going to do it. Um, other than that, I've got a bag of these um, sort of double leg switches. So you get micro switches. So if we can see that, uh, it's a tiny little switch. It has two legs, and that's it. And it's a clicky, nice, nice clicky button. Hear my cookie button. Um, and we're going to mount that behind all of the controls on, on the Game Gear face. And then I also have ordered some, um, some capacitive touch sensors. So I've been testing one and it's in this jar. So uh, the idea was to test something that worked through glass or through plastic or basically through a non-conductive material. So the way this switch works is it kind of emanates a field and when it detects the 
um, the capacitive sort of of your skin, it, it triggers. So you don't even actually have to touch it. You just need to be near it and it will trigger. And the, so I put this in this jar so I could test it. So for my Game Gear, what I'm going to have is the D-pad. I've got uh, five face buttons here. So start one, two, three, four, I'm going to have. And then I've got two triggers up the top. So what I've done to my Game Gear case, if we move this stuff out of the way, is I've drilled two holes in. Um, I'm not 100% happy with the placement, but um, you know, this, is a, this is a prototype, so we can live with that. Uh, to drill those holes, I used this step bit. Um, the diam diameter of the holes is 12 mils, so I, could, I put the step bit into the existing hole, and it's just about... 12 millimeters so those are the two holes i made here 12 millimeter holes the bonus of using the step bit is it has a little bevel between steps uh, so that gives you a nice little beveled edge on your on your button here and it actually looks pretty nice then the other thing i did was i hacked away at the top of the case here and you can see um, if i put my thumbs behind it you can see there's two holes in the in in it there and that's where i'm going to put some shoulder buttons so there'll be two shoulder buttons here. I've retained the, um, the plastic that I cut away. So I haven't decided 100% if I'm going to uh, sort of mount these bits of plastic in some way uh, as sort of buttons, or if I'm gonna 3D print someone completely new to go in here, that, that maybe looks a little bit better because you can kind of tell these have been hacked up a little bit. One of the things that's gonna make this whole endeavor way easier is having 3D printed parts to, to work from. Um, and so for instance, uh, I, I've printed up a little enclosure that's holding, holding a button. Um, so it's designed to be just about big enough for the button to slide into nice, nice and easily. Um, and the idea being that um, we'll design something that holds the button sort of on the bottom of, of all the holds this switch, sorry, on the bottom of the buttons. So it's very, um, so the buttons are all nice and clicky when they're, when they're held in. Uh, so the idea is to design something that kind of sits above the, above the five buttons here and then the four buttons for the, for the D-pad. Um, holds the switches at sort of the right height. It's all worked out in advance. And then, you know, when I make the second one of these, when I make the sort of start making a production model, um, I don't have to rejig all, all of this stuff. Um, yes, so we would have, say, four buttons above the D-pad held held in by some kind of plate that uh, sits over where the um, where the Game Gear mainboard used to be. I know that I need to keep this center section free. So, like for instance, the power board, uh, the sorry, screen goes about here. Um, then the Raspberry Pi itself will go probably down here somewhere. We'll lose all these connectors. I'm probably going to want to print some kind of 3D, um, 3D plate that's, that sort of separates the uh, the uh, driver board for the screen from the Raspberry Pi. There'll be wires all coming off of the GPIO. There'll be somewhere in here. There'll be the Teensy. You know, probably secured say down in this area and all the wires going to it um, and all that stuff so yeah we what we've got to do is basically work out where we're going to position all these things and then there's there's room also in the uh in the back of the shell remember the batteries are going to stay where they are the power the sound and power boards stay where they are uh, but it gives us a little bit of playroom here again the cartridge is going to sit there um yeah, so we'll have to figure out basically how we fit all this stuff in where we need to fit it. Because there's only so much height between the um, the buttons and the back of the case. Because it, it was designed to have sort of the, the main board sort of squished down on top of everything. So we've got to take all that into account when we design it. So our next step is kind of just to fiddle around with the 3D parts, take some measurements, kind of figure stuff out and uh, go from there. 
So that was part one of really where we're going to go with our with our game gear. Uh, in part two, we'll be looking at uh, more where we can fit the parts into it. Uh, looking at some revisions and, and how the buttons need to work. We're going to use the some of the existing buttons as well. But I don't. what I don't want to do is take a load of existing buttons from Game Gears and put them in one Game Gear. So, you know, I'm going to use up my entire stock of buttons. I need to 3D print the extra, com the extra components, if you see what I mean. The extra buttons, all that stuff needs to be 3D printed so I don't run out of stock. Um, yeah, so if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel. Um, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter, 16-Bit Bench. Uh, we do all kinds of stuff like this, uh, lots of refurbishment, and I'm quite excited to start on this new project with uh, with making a Raspberry Pi handheld. Uh, this probably first revision is going to stay with me, but um, once I've worked it out and I've got it, I've got the buttons position where I like them, and I've got the whole thing going. I'm going to start making a couple more, and those will be available either through our website or through, um, through our Facebook page. So yeah, thanks for dropping by and I'll see you next time.